Welcome to the 495. I'm your host, Doug Sparks, editor-in-chief of Merrimack Valley Magazine. Lou, how are you doing this week? Doing very well. We're up and running. Uh, it's always a good sign. That's, that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, you're, uh, I'm, I'm hearing we might get snow. When? This weekend. Oh, God. And it's, it's causing complications because uh, this week I'm writing the eight great things to do this weekend newsletter. Yes. Uh, and... You know, one of the things I was going to put in, go go hiking, go to Harold Park or something. Get out there. Enjoy yep. some nature. Uh, and I've been going to the National Weather Service uh, website. Yep. And every time I look, it's a completely different weather report. So I keep, you know, so the hook is like, ah, you know, it'll be snowing this weekend. Get your gloves out. And then we'll look and it will say yep. it's going to be 60 degrees. So who knows? Well, who go, knows what the weather's going to be? I like parentheticals a lot. So yeah. hiking parenthetically or cross-country skiing yeah oh, there we go yeah exactly <laughs> Whatever you want to do right no snowshoeing yeah yeah so either way i will be out there maybe 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 you'll see me out hunting uh mushrooms there aren't many mushrooms out there in the, in the, the winter but there are a few and some of them are really, really? Good. they yeah. grow in the winter oyster mushroom well there's a there's a few out there there's oyster mushrooms which will grow in the um the winter that you can eat mm -hmm. there's some medicinal mushrooms uh sometimes i'll see reishi and uh there's something called chaga which is something you can make a tea from that's that's very good for you. Um, and they're easier to spot, but there's fewer of them. They're easier to spot because you, there's no leaves, right? right. You can have those, all those beautiful uh, you know, lines so you can see. Uh, so like, much to look forward to. A lot of people hate the winter. I look forward to the winter. I love getting out there. I'm liking it less and less as I get older. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's not the spirit, man. No, th you you got to be positive about these things. Well, the thing for me is up until Christmas, I'm fine. Yeah, it, January and February, I can't. I'm having trouble dealing with. It does. It, yeah, it, it gets a little. It gets a little grim. I'll give you that. Yeah, and March you get encouraged, right? Yes. You, know, you don't get payoff that often, but you get encouraged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so our guest today is named Hamdala Olona, and she's the founder of Goody Crunch, which is a company. Are you based in Haverhill? Yes, we are in Haverhill, and you live in Haverhill. Are you in Haverhill right now? I live in Haverhill, okay. and I made Goody Crunch in Haverhill. Oh, okay. But you didn't, uh, when you first came to the United States, or when you first came to North America, you started in Canada, speaking of cold, right? Were you in Canada for a year? Is that right? I was. Why Canada? Uh, and where were you in Canada? In Montreal, the headquarters of snow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, I, I'm an idiot. Oh, that's a great city, though. It, it's a great oh, city, but I'm an idiot. Gorgeous. I went to visit one time, and I went in January. I had a little yeah. bit of spare time, <laughs> so I figured, I'll just go up there. And it was that kind of cold where you have to worry about your eyeballs freezing. Yeah. That's uh, right. It was really bad, and I was like a grad student, so I was broke. So all I had, like, I, I we, we just drove up in this car, and I had some cookies in the back. That's all I ate for a week. <laughs> I went to Montreal at negative 30 Almost froze my retinas and just ate cookies for a week. And I'm sorry, but Burlington, <laughs> Vermont is always colder than Montreal. Yeah, really? There, there isn't a colder place in New England or, or in the I east than know. Burlington, Vermont. All right. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll take your word for it. Anyways, so you were there for about a year? Uh, in Montreal? Yeah. Oh, no. I lived in Canada for about three and a half years. Oh, okay, so you're there longer than I thought. Okay, and then why did you move to, uh, why did you move to the United States after that? So I met my husband in Montreal. We got married there, ah. and then he got a job in the U.S. Um, as a scientist. Okay. So he's into biotechnology, cancer research, yeah, and um, you know rheumatoid arthritis and all those. Yeah. Okay. So we moved here because of his job. And did you move to Haverhill first? We moved to um, New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, Portsmouth. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you also spent, you spent time in England too, right? Did you study in England? That's right. Okay. I, um, we, so originally I'm from Nigeria, West Africa, yeah. and we had uh, problems with the universities. The universities got uh, shut down for like two years. And my father was like, I, I don't think this is going to help you. So you better get out. So he sent me to a private school hmm. uh, in Cambridge, uh, England where I did my A-levels, and then I went on to Leicestershire to do my university. Okay. And what did you study? You were studying business? And finance. Oh, okay. All right. Because you're, you're, you come from a family of entrepreneurs. Right? That's right. As you say my in the mom, article, yeah. and, and people can look at the, the November issue of Merrimack Valley Magazine. There's a profile of you. Uh, you, right. you say it's in your blood, this entrepreneurship. What did your, what did your father and mother do? So my father had um, car dealerships. Hmm. He used to sell uh, this car called Peugeot. Mm -hmm. It's a French car. Oh, I know that. My dad had one. Exactly. <laughs> it was like his favorite car of his whole life. He loved the Peugeot. <laughs> <laughs> 
So he had one, um, he had two uh, dealerships, one in my hometown and one in the city in Ibadan. Hmm. And uh, my mom was a Coca-Cola distributor for the region. So we grew up in business, you know, helping mom during the holidays to lift the, those crates of Coca-Cola and all that. So it runs in the blood. I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur one day, but I still had to get my degree. You sure. Know. <laughs> right, right. Um, so uh, before we specifically get into Goody Crunch and, and what's going on there and where the idea comes from, uh, for people who don't know, tell us a little bit about Nigerian cuisine as a whole. What's Nigerian food like? Oh, my God. So Ni Nigerians are one of the friendliest people you will ever come across mm. in the world. We love our food. And when you come to visit us, we will please you with everything. So uh, our main food in Nigeria is actually gluten-free. Hmm. Most of our food is gluten-free because flour is not grown in Nigeria. Wheat is not grown there. It's imported. So our food is corn, rice, uh, cassava, yam. So they're mainly gluten-free hmm. and uh, they're delicious. So, you know, that's, that's the last thing I, I would say. They're really delicious. And um, so... Um, we we really uh, into cuisine. Sure, uh, you know it's it's funny you mentioned gluten because I wanted to ask you about that in terms of your own product, which is gluten free. But it, there's this. It seems like a, a lot of people who make food that is meant to be tasty, that's meant to be delicious, are a little bit cautious about overemphasizing the maybe vegan aspect or gluten free aspect because people then think it's a health food and they think there might be kind of chemical taste or they think it might exist to be gluten free. This is gluten free because it happens to be gluten free, right? right. And that's just that's just an added bonus. That's right. Do so, you, yeah, go ahead. No, no go ahead. I, I, I'm just curious like do, do you do you feel like you turn people off sometimes by saying, "Oh, it's gluten free." And like, I, "I don't want any part of that gluten free stuff." And you're like, "No, it's it's always been gluten free. It's it's never been part of the equation." So, um, the, the the trick with Goody Crunch is I get people to taste it. Mm. And then I tell them, did you know that, you know, this is gluten-free, it's vegan, it's organic, uh, coconut and all that. So when they come to my stall, they already see that, I've, that it's gluten-free, it's vegan, it's organic. And then they're, they, they're like curious. And then they're like, how can something be gluten-free and be vegan and delicious? It's, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't jive. And then when they taste it, they, they're hooked. They're like... It's hard to find something that combines gluten-free with vegan, with organic, and it's delicious and it's crunchy. It's just, they just can't get that kind of thing uh, in the market because most gluten-free products are really chalky. They, they, they're kind of tasteless. So, but because where I come from, most of our food is gluten-free naturally. It's easy for me and... Um, it's, it just surprises people how tasty uh, Goody Crunch is. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it's good and I know it's tasty beyond being healthy just because, as I was telling you before the show, my kids love this stuff because we'll get it the chance for farmer's market and they eat it up and they have no concept <laughs> of gluten or anything. Uh, my kids and my wife uh, uh, love Goody Crunch. So how did the idea come about? So uh, this is my grandmother's recipe she used to make it for us when we were little and to just entertain friends and family and um i used to do the same thing until my friends started bringing my attention to the fact that i can actually sell goody crunch so in 2017 i registered the trademark and then i didn't start selling until 2018 summer when my friend uh, Jeff Gracie of the Haverhill Farmers Market. Oh, we've we've written about him. He's also an artist. He's a really great guy. He's he, he he is amazing. Yeah. him and his wife. And so um, he said, "Hamdala, come sell this thing at the farmers market. Let's see how it goes." And boom, I was sold out. First, second, third market, and uh, that was it. And then the following year, I came up with the. Um, other three flavors so i was only selling the original hmm. and then i started selling the dark chocolate the peanut butter and the flaxseed 
the following year. So we now have four flavors. Okay. When Katie Lovett interviewed you for the article, uh, you mentioned you were looking into maybe like a ketogenic, a keto version. Is that still in the works? It is. I'm working on it. And uh, every disappointment is a blessing. I guess the, the pandemic is some kind of a blessing because I'm able to, uh, the time that I couldn't go to the farmer's market, I'm able to work on the keto one, which uh, will be sweetened with monk fruit extract. Yep. Yeah, for people who don't know that, what that is, what's monk fruit extract? So it's a natural sweetener, which is derived from the monk fruit, uh, which is in, uh, has its origin in China. They grow it there uh, originally, and it's the extract of that fruit that sweetens it. And this will be good for people who are diabetic or people who plan to go on the keto diet. Mm. So where do they get these? Where do they get your products? Uh, my product is in um, Butcher Boy, North Andover, Cider Hill Farm in Amesbury, Tender Crop Farm in Newbury and in Dover, uh, in um, uh, uh, Sweet Lydia's in, in Lowell. Mm. It's online. It's in Tuscan uh, Market yep. in uh, Salem, New Hampshire, and also uh, with uh, Over the Spoon. Okay. Uh, we'll put it in the comment section, but what's your website address so people can know where to look for it it's, there? It's www.goodycrunch.com. Okay. And are you still doing farmer's markets at all, or is that off during COVID? I, it was off during COVID, but we will still, we will be there once uh, COVID is over next summer. Okay. Hopefully. Uh, so before the show, you mentioned that when the article came out, you, you had a good reaction and people were talking to you about it. And the people from E4ALL uh, sent you a copy. So what's your relationship with, with uh, E4ALL? How do you know them? So I was selling at the Hebrew uh, Farmer's Market and... Uh, the state representative for Havro, Andy Vargas, came to my store and he said, oh, Hamdala, this is good. Have you heard of E4ALL? I said, I don't know what that is. And he said, it's just like Shark Tank, but without the shark. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, he said, you should enroll in it. So I, I went there and uh, I enrolled in the accelerator program, and um, Goody Crunch won the top prize in March of 2019. It's an intensive program which teaches you on, you know, how to be an entrepreneur, all the things that you need to do. They trained me on how to look for who my customers are, my targeted customer, everything. And on top of it, they rewarded me with three thousand, three thousand dollars. Uh, gift, uh, for which I'm grateful because it helped me to get some equipment and all that. Mm. So I would encourage any new entrepreneur to join e for all uh, so they can help them uh, to be on their feet. Yeah. Uh, are you thinking about the future now? Are you thinking about new products? And, and are, are we going to start seeing this in stores in different ways? Like what's, what's, what's going on? What are the plans for the future? What are the plans for 2021? So, like I said, I'm working on the keto uh, flavor, which will be my fifth flavor. And also, I am working with uh, a vending uh, machine company who will carry the snack size of Goody Crunch hmm. uh, come 2021. So, we will see the snack size in uh, vending machines um, in, in the Merrimack region in 2021. And um, for now, that's uh that's what i have for 2021 yeah but beyond that i have other plans which i prefer to <laughs> let it be for now sure of course you, you have to let it incubate well i'm excited about the keto i've, I've actually been on the, the keto diet since march uh with with uh pretty good results so i would i would make an exception for for goody crunch in general and i think i think coconut is like this is a coconut based uh, snack, and I think coconut in general is just really great for people on on ketogenic diets. I, I make this like, special coffee in the morning where I put coconut milk in there. I don't even know what it is. I'm not a scientist, but it's my understanding coconut's really good for you. Coconut is one of the best blessings for mankind. Hmm. It it honestly from is it the 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 oil the the shaft which is uh, 
which has fiber, which is rich in fiber, or the, the coconut milk or the coconut water, the coconut tree itself in Africa, they use it for a lot of things. So the, 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 the leaves, the branches of it, you can remove the, the leaves and then make the stalk, a bunch of it into a broom, which you can sweep with. <laughs> you can cook with it. If it falls down and it dies, you can chop it and make it into firewood. So many things. Yeah. Uh, do you visit Nigeria? Do you go back home? I just came back in February. Okay. And then the the, the Corona, uh, you know, stay at home started. Yeah. So I was very lucky. So you, you still have family there and you still like to visit. And, and it, aside from COVID stuff, you, you have connections there. Oh, yes. My mom still lives there. Yeah. My mom is 88. Ah, it's all that coconut, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Her mom was 101 when wow. she passed away. Jeez. Yeah. So uh, the, um, you know, I'm wondering when you go, do you have your entrepreneur hat on? Are you looking for new flavors or new inspirations for, for things to bring back to Haverhill? That's right. I am. So I've been talking to mom about uh, other products. The ones she's telling me are about are uh, they have they, they have corn and um i'm kind of uh hesitant about corn based one because i know in the u.s a lot of people don't want anything with starch or corn or, mm. so i'm looking for a way to um to work with starch free products so i'm still talking to her on more starch free options yeah. Do you worry about that with these these kind of fads that come through, like everyone's like avoiding this thing or avoiding that thing, and, and you just never know whether you're going to hit it? And, you know, like if I, I hear this, I, I read a book recently by this guy named Benjamin Lohr, uh, and it's a history of the American supermarket. And he was saying that sometimes the people in charge of these markets really become to, they come to dislike people. <laughs> because they're so finicky about things. And there's like, you know, one year every, everybody's doing this and the next year they're doing this and it's hard to keep up with it. And, and plus, it has to be affordable. Everything has to hit this certain price point. Uh, you know, so I'm just, I'm wondering, like, do, do you worry, you know, you, you mentioned corn. You know, who knows? Everybody could be eating corn in two years or it can be, you know, some scientific study will come out and everybody's going to stop. You know, who knows? Is that, is that tough? Is it tough to follow these trends and kind of predict what people are going to do? It is tough, but you know, in my situation, I'm not gonna worry about the corn because one thing I've found out is what is good for somebody is not necessarily bad for another person. Hmm. So uh, for me, since we've done Goody Crunch, which is completely, which is tax free, we can do the corn one for people who don't mind eating corn hmm. because we're not gonna deprive those people of what they like eating so in the future yes i will introduce other things which have some starch uh because we can do a one for all uh product sure uh you know for everybody people should have a choice where does the goody crunch name come from <laughs> oh god it's from my children ah uh. so I was thinking, because in Africa, in Nigeria, we used to call it coconut candy, you know, everywhere. And my children, and I'm like, you know what, we have to give it a brand name. We can't just call it general coconut candy. And then they started coming up with um, a Coco Crunch. And then we found out that a big, really huge company already has that name. And we're like, yikes, don't let them sue us. <laughs> so, and then, and, then, and then they said, oh, how about Goody? crunch it doesn't have to have coconut so and then we just linked it together and we changed the seed in the crunch to k just to make it different and then i did a search and i found that nobody had it so i went for my um, the patent yeah so how do you feel about the winters if you go, I, I i've never been to nigeria i assume the winters <laughs> aren't like haverhill right is, is it been a, is it been kind of tough to adapt to the climate I mean, I know you've been here for a while. But. <laughs> so for me, um, in the U.S., the winter hasn't been bad because I'm coming from Montreal. I mean, having mm. lived in Montreal for three and a half years, um, I adjusted well. But when I first got to England, because that was where I first experienced winter, hmm. 
it was a culture shock for me. I I couldn't I could hardly survive, and I was a student. I missed home. I just I was always uh, wearing layers, and people would laugh at me. My friends, would. <laughs> but then I got used to it, and um, hey, here I am. I survived it. Yeah, yeah. So, Lou, do you have any questions for uh, for Hamdala? Yeah, with obviously you have an entrepreneurial background, so I think I know part of the answer to this. But I always love this question with people who have businesses, and especially food businesses. Tell me about the moment you decided that Goody Crunch was going to become a product. I mean, you're sitting there making something for your kids, and then all of a sudden there had to be one moment where you said, you know what, we can sell this. So I would invite my friends home uh, for uh, my children's birthday or... Uh, Eid, which is like uh, uh, the, 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 the celebration that we do after Ramadan. And uh, my friends would, I would wrap it in uh, um, cello, se- colorful cello paper, cello film. And every t- my friends would ask, aren't you going to make that coconut thing? <laughs> every time they would ask, are you going to make the coconut thing? If you're not going to make it, I'm not coming. So I now saw that it's like they were getting addicted to it. They really wanted it. They were always asking for it. It was at that moment they convinced me that, okay, maybe this will sell. If you, so, go ahead. If you didn't have this product, if you didn't have this background, if you didn't have the relationship with Goody Crunch, would you have chosen food as a business? Yes, I would have because yeah. my mom had restaurants. Oh. And yes, <laughs> so... My mom used to have restaurants, and uh, she was really into cooking, and uh, I would still have done it. It And by the way, uh, beyond 2021, there's going to be a drink. So let me just give you a little hint into it. So there's going to be a a drink. Oh, is there? (laughs) Have you ever considered opening your own restaurant? Um, Not a restaurant, uh, because... Having a restaurant is very demanding, and uh, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I would rather have a product, which I would manufacture. Because when you have a restaurant, you have a product, and you're also serving people. I don't want to have to wait uh, to to have a sitting place and serve people. It's a lot. So I would rather just make the product and have them have them buy it, ship it. That's uh, that's easier. All right. I'm a uh, New England, actually a Merrimack Valley guy, born and bred. So your story of traveling from Nigeria to England to Canada to the United States fascinates me. And I want to know your general takeaways. What are, what are some of the lessons that you've learned d- diving into all these cultures, and especially in context to us here in the United States? You know, yeah. What have you learned? How do you, how do you look upon us? Because, again, I've been here all my life, so I'm kind of in the bubble. To me, all human beings are from the same place, whether you're from New England or from Africa or whatever. It's the connection, it's the chemistry, it's the humanity that brings us together. And in my family, my, my older brothers had traveled before me. They had traveled abroad. For example, my, uh, one of my brothers, his wife uh, is from Indiana one brother, his wife is from Japan. Hmm. And so my family is United Nations. That's what I should call <laughs> us. So, so we're, um, uh, so for me, I'm used to the different kinds of people. And I speak a couple of languages. I speak English, I speak French, I speak Arabic. So that humanity, that connection, that ability to build cross cultural relationship with people is imbibed in me. So I, I can get along with everybody. A lot of people wouldn't be able to swim in those waters as well as you have. And I think you just said that your siblings led the way a little bit for you. Did your parents lead the way too? Did they make you uh, adaptable to being as worldly as you are? My parents uh, gave me um, freedom, which, and also when I was little, I first started with boarding school. I was sent to a boarding school at the age of six. I went to boarding school at six. So that is the, 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 the beginning of it, the beginning of exposing me to the world. If you send your six-year-old to the boarding school, they're going to meet people from different parts of the country. 
So that was the, the beginning. That was the elementary uh, stage of it. And then when I grew up uh, in secondary school, it was another boarding school. And I also lived with my principal when I was in secondary school. Wow. And it was my principal who took me to England for the first time when I was 13 years old. We went uh, on vacation to England. So uh, going back to England as an 18 year old to do my, uh, I'm sorry, as a, as a uh, almost 20 year old, years old, to do my uh, A-levels and my university was not new to me anymore because yeah. I have always been exposed to people, to cultures, you know, since a very young age. And finally, for me, this recipe is inspired by your grandmother's recipe, and I'm wondering about the adaptation process and how much of that was for American regulation and how much of it was that for American taste. What's the difference between Goody Crunch and what your grandmother was making? So the one my grandmother was making was uh, sweeter, be I guess because they didn't realize how sugar wasn't too good for you at that time. Yeah. So... It was very, very sweet. And even the first uh, batch of Goody Crunch that I sold at the Haverhill Farmer's Market uh, was sweeter. And then after I went to Eat For All, they now trained me on how to sample things, how to do a questionnaire with my customers, see what they like and what they didn't like. And based on that, I adjusted the sweetness. And even in the future, I will still reduce the sugar because of the what the American market wants. Yeah, I mean that, that that's interesting to me because it seems like yeah. like a lot of cuisines that come here. I would have expected the opposite. Yeah, yeah sweetened, yeah. but maybe that just shows changing tastes for people in the United States or changing evidence about health or. Or who knows? I mean, we know, like, if you follow, like, the history of, like, Chinese food or something like that, what is that? That's putting more and more sugar in to appeal to Americans. I think it's polling because I think people will tell her they don't want more sugar, <laughs> but Americans That's love right. sugar. <laughs> that That's right. Because at, at the farmer's market, I would ask my customers, you know, how do you like it? And they would tell me, oh, it's too sweet. Hmm. Oh, um, are you going to make something without sugar in the future? Uh, so I, I engage my customers. I question them a lot. And so based on what they tell me, I, I, I adapt it. Yeah, I mean, that it also makes sense to me, uh, you know, on, on some level without having thought about it before. I just, like, I think about my kids, right? And they love Goody Crunch. But I don't want to give them something that's too candy-like. I'm concerned about their health. So I want to find something that hits that sweet spot. I mean, they're not going to eat like me it, you know they're just not going to it's not gonna be pleasant it's gonna be torture for them uh so you want something to be kind of crunchy and fun and have nice texture and have some sweetness but without thinking that you're you're you know setting setting the stage for health concerns down the line uh you know this is and, and we know right now like sodas i think are, are kind of on the wane yeah like a lot of the soda companies are kind of struggling um you know because of these, these concerns about um sugar well uh, you know close to to me right now is tuscan market and butcher boy maybe i'll swing by yeah and up, pick up a... <laughs> when this interview came up i told i told doug that sounds really familiar to me and it's tender crop farm in newbury i've seen it at tender crop farm in newbury yeah so, I'm so go pick some up it's out there I, I i feel sad that you're not at farmers markets because it would be nice to you know say hi in person so i hope that starts up again in in 2021 i i asked this and i don't um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but are you thinking about like maybe going to Whole Foods or or, or, or you want to use a dis different distribution network? We are uh, thinking of going to Whole Foods. Um, I've been talking to them and they have their seasons where they they do a review of products. I have presented Goody Crunch to them in the past. They've told me some things that they wanted me to change about it, hmm. but my packaging and all that. So I am working on it. We will have a new package, a new design and all that. They wanted a specific type and then they wanted, um, they liked a, a, a specific flavor the hmm. most out of them. So we, we, we still, we'll still um, go back and uh, present to them what they've asked for. 
Sure. I mean, whatever you think of Whole Foods, and I shop at Whole Foods, uh, you know, they do seem to do a good job of, of highlighting local products. Like, I always go in there and I'll see, like, the local this, and I gravitate to that. And maybe it's a buck more or two bucks more. I don't care. I'd rather support the local business. That's that's my feeling. Um, you know, so that's, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, in the meantime, even better, if you really want to support a local business twice, you can go to Butcher Boy or Tuscan Market <laughs> or a local place. There you go. If you can't make it to the farmer's market or order online. So one more time before we uh, say goodbye, your webpage? www.goodycrimes.com. That's That sounds cool. I am hungry now. Our guest today has been Hamdala Alona from Goody Crunch. Next week marks our 50th episode and we're going to have lane glenn from northern essex community college on the first time we will have a repeat guest That's right. and we're going to talk to lane next week we have a lot to talk about for sure hamdala thank you so much for coming on the 495 i really really appreciate it Good, take, take care. care happy holiday happy holiday bye <laughs>